I made it on the ferry to Southport. Perfect timing. By the time I get to Charleston, it should be around 6 p.m. And I'll be able to check into the place that Yulia and I are staying at and go catch some sunset for you guys. If you're in the Wilmington area and you want to come to Cape Fear, but you fear to come to Cape Fear because then you think you have to go all the way back up and around to go down to, let's say, drive down to Myrtle Beach, fear not. The ferry takes you from the southern point of Cape Fear to Southport on the other side. It is so awesome. Now crossing the Cape Fear River, which winds its way through a rich tapestry of American history and natural beauty, stretching over 200 miles from its headwaters in the deep river, the river flows southeast or southward, whispering stories of the past to those who take a moment to listen. As the largest river in North Carolina, the Cape Fear River plays a vital role in the economy and ecology of the region. Its waters nurture a diverse ecosystem where wildlife thrives in the shadow of history. As for the Fort Fisher Ferry, which I'm cruising on right now, bridging the waters of the Cape Fear is what it's for. From Fort Fisher to Southport, this ferry is more than a connection between points. It's a passage through the serene beauty of North Carolina's coastal landscape. The Cape Fear River and the Fort Fisher Ferry together offer a journey, not just across water, but through history, nature, and the enduring spirit of North Carolina. You see that? There are purple flowers the entire way on the side of the road, makes the drive even more pleasant, even more fun, even more magical. Five minutes away from Charleston. Woohoo! I am so grateful for today. I saw a lot. I experienced a lot. Now I'm driving through the county of Charleston, South Carolina. It's beautiful. If you're ever thinking of doing a road trip down south from, let's say, New York, let me know. picked up Yulia, we had dinner at an Indian restaurant and spent the night catching up. I did not spend any time filming because that time with Yulia was really precious to me and I just wanted to dedicate my time to that. Look at here! <laughs> so she arrived last night, we talked all night. We slept all morning. <laughs> Mostly me. Yeah. We're going to brunch now at what's called the Iron Rose, downtown Charleston. What do you think? I'm excited. Can't wait to eat. <laughs> it's really beautiful here and warm. Yes, that's the main part. We love it. Beautiful Charleston. Thank you for having us.
Nestled in the walled courtyard of the Mel's House Hotel, a Curio Collection Hotel, the Iron Rose Restaurant emerges as a cherished spot within Charleston's French Quarter, serving refined southern coastal cuisine. Both locals and visitors are drawn to its seasonal southern dishes prepared with local ingredients alongside its distinctive cocktails and shareable plates. Here, you can choose from dining in the outdoor courtyard, at the cozy bar, or in the spacious dining room, making Iron Rose an inviting space for any event from grand celebrations to quiet evenings. The name Iron Rose is inspired by Charleston's secret gardens, surrounded by exquisite wrought iron work crafted by generations of skilled blacksmiths into beautiful floral designs. This name celebrates the artistry and resilience found in turning the rough into something delicately beautiful. and I cherished every moment spent wandering the enchanting streets of Charleston, a city that effortlessly captures the heart with its unique blend of history, architecture, and southern charm. What sets Charleston apart is its well-preserved antebellum architecture, which lines the cobblestone streets and whispers stories of a bygone era, inviting onlookers into a world steeped in history and rich in cultural heritage. The vibrant hues of the Rainbow Row, the serene beauty of the Battery Promenade overlooking Charleston Harbor, and the lush gardens of Middleton Place all contribute to the city's unmistakable allure. It was the warmth of its people, the tantalizing low country cuisine, and the gentle sway of palmetto trees in the breeze that made our walks truly unforgettable, encapsulating the essence of Charleston beauty and its unique ability to make anyone feel at home. We are about to enter into the very first liquor store in mm -hmm. the whole U.S. called The Tavern. How old did he say? What, what year again? Uh-oh. I was looking at 1863? Yeah. Pretty cool. Very, very old. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Chris. I work at the Tavern at Rainbow Row. It's been the oldest liquor store in America since 1686. And I'm gonna show you around today. So first thing is gonna be my man, Bruce. Bruce is an African Cape Buffalo shot in the 50s. He is actually a Roland Ward, which means that he was a trophy Buffalo. Uh, we also have all of these beautiful hand blown custom lights. These are all done here in Charleston. Another is going to be our confessional. That confessional is from the 1800s and it was brought in over from Italy. Now something else that we offer besides beer and wine is also we have our own trap doors that were used during prohibition. So of course they were used as cellars. But they didn't only just store booze, they also smuggled booze. 
Inside of this wine room, we wanted to give a little bit of the building back to itself, so we showed the brick. But we also wanted to make it a little bit nice, so we reused wine boxes that we got in and made a beautiful wall out of it. Now we're just going to make our way beside our beautiful wine wall into what is the front room. Now, the way that we laid this out is we wanted, as soon as you walked in, to be nice and, and go back in time. We wanted to show you the exposed ceilings and also all of the walls. Now, going over here, this is shelving that was at the Library of Congress, and then it was at Harvard, and then went up for auction, and we were lucky to get it. We have two, one, two, hand-blown custom lights from a Belgian train station. We also have blast-proof lighting. This is a Chicago workbench with all of our beautiful beers that are all local. We have a twin set, wine racks from France. A woodworker's bench from the 1800s that we actually still check you out on and still use today. Our tap system is going to be a fire suppression system from New York City, 7th Avenue. Reduce, reuse, recycle is our saying here. Anything that you want, we also have cold. My favorite thing is the bathroom. It's weird to say. But the bathroom, we actually have World War II Waters helmets as light fixtures. Also, we do have a special urinal. Every urinal has to be unique. Now, here at Tavern at Rainbow Row, we are a beer and wine store as well as a liquor store. And in the beer and wine, we have a tap system where we put it into 32 ounce cans for you called Crowlers. And those crowlers look just like this. Now we go ahead and have these. They're empty, of course. And then we just put the tops on them, put them into our own can system. And we go ahead and we seal the top for you. Now, guys, that was just a little look at the Tavern at Rainbow Row. And I'll give you a specialty look here in just a bit. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.